Hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Milan Stehlik and I am working at the Department of Applied Statistics uh, at uh, Linz Institute of Technology, Johannes Kaplan University of Linz, Austria. And also I'm uh, on the uh, working uh, with uh, Institute of Statistics, University of Valparaiso, Chile. And I will be speaking today about the feasible modeling on uh, predictions of COVID-19 outbreaks which is the important topic uh, from the perspective of the uh, politics uh, of uh, how to treat the, the state policies uh, in order to uh, increase uh, the, the chance to, uh, to uh, better address the COVID outbreaks. There are several COVID outbreaks uh, in several countries observable, so we have the data to analyze that. So, uh, this uh, talk is based on the recent publication with the colleagues uh, from Slovakia, uh, uh, Chile, uh, and University of Iowa, Iowa State, uh, US. And we have uh, addressed exactly the COVID-19 outbreaks predictions and we concentrated on the issues on stability, parameter estimation, and precision. So it was published in a, in a, a Taylor and Francis Stochastic Analysis and Application Journal, and it is free downloadable, so everybody can download the PDF for free. So for the outlines of the talk, uh, the main problem is even if we know the model of the outbreak from epidemiological and biological and macrobiological point of view, uh, there are parametric models. Uh, we can ask the question why there are so many uh, mistakes happening around the countries where the outbreaks are, uh, are rising and why there are so many troubles observed by correctly fitting of these parameters. Actually, the models itself are not so interesting as the param interpretable parameters, uh, parameters uh, typically are related to the replication numbers and to the, to the increase, uh, the speed of increase. Uh, how, uh, and, and of course, the general uh, questions on how many infected people we have these days or last 24 hours, or how many people have died uh, uh, with uh, uh, reasons related to the COVID, and how many people have been cured. So, how many, uh, what we can predict for the hospitals for the next uh, few weeks. So the issue why uh, these parameters are actually so difficult to be estimated or predicted is the ill posedness of, or, or we call it ill posedness of inverse problem of estimation and prediction of COVID-19 outbreak. What does this mean? This means that even when you have the model, uh, you cannot uh, uh, all parameters estimate or predict uh, with the same precision and then you need to count with imprecisions, errors and the data fluctuations which can cause that the parameters will not be estimated exactly. And this can have a severe effects on, on our uh, modeling of the outbreak which can uh, like, like I can remember the, the problem with the Chilean model where they use the SIR so, so, so suspectable infective removed model uh, and uh, they fit it uh, first uh, with the influenza data and you, you can you can get a shift uh, uh, when, when to expect the exponential grow. So there are very sensitive topics uh, in this area we need to address and make them uh, well visible. So uh, if you want to see it from the perspective of randomness, then the random perturbation in parameters can cause instability of estimation and prediction of the model itself, but it's also vice versa. So having a model and having a data, I am not getting one parameter perfectly because the, there are some stability uh, regions for the parameters where they will be estimated very well. Uh, 
uh, and there, uh, so, so for instance, the SIR model can be more stable around the zero mortality, and that can cause that if you're running your alg algorithms, you, uh, your algorithms can uh, reach uh, this stability attraction, and you can get a too uh, low uh, estimation uh, for the expected deaths because of the mortality parameter uh, for when the mortality or death parameter equals to zero you can you can see that so sensitivity of parameters uh itself is a topic which should be discussed again and again because we are now um, having three inputs and there are data which are imperfect there is a model which is also imperfect that's actually just the solution of some uh differential equations typically what we see in 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 the, in the real modeling and there are parameters which are we want to interpret and we will be discussing during the talk the sensitivity of the parameters of zero and exponential uh, model and we, we try to justify which of these parameters are more sensitive and for which we need to take more attention Stability of the model itself is an issue which can be studied, and there have been already some studies of the series uh, influenza and other viral uh, diseases in, in past, but uh, COVID has its own uh, specific uh, uh, characteristics we, we need to take into account when we are going to use the, the well-known models. Uh, so exponential growth curves is one of the models we will be discussing during the talk. Uh, exponential is the most uh, feasible uh, outbreak uh, uh, model of epidemiological curve. So that's therefore we touch it. And, and the famous SIR model, which is already coming from the last century, from 50s. So, so this is a suspectable infective remote with a compartmental style of uh, modeling on, on a given uh, population. And we'll be discussing USA, Chile, and China, and we'll uh, touch as well some results from Slovak Republic, too, from Central Europe. And there will be uh, suggestions and conclusions coming. <clears throat> so, from the perspective, just to, uh, just to remark, what was a coronavirus disease, COVID-19 is, but it's a severe acute respiratory syndrome. Uh, and and uh, we use, uh, according to the uh, World Health Organization, the abbreviation SARS-CoV-2. It's a disease that was identified in late 2019 and was declared a pandemic on March 11 and COVID is definitely an international public health emergency. Uh, there are several things which, are, which haven't been visible before, uh, like a mysterious blood clotting, and, you, and there, you can see several uh, papers published even in National Geographic or around the, the medical journals, which are discussing several features already. Uh, and uh, uh, there have been even the activity where, where the people active in American Heart Association think about a classification of SARS to cov as a cardiovascular illness. So what, what is the, the, the simplest models of the outbreaks are relating to the transitivity of the people and one of the uh, classical examples already from the past is the Wuhan uh, outbreak, which have been uh, uh, discussed from the perspective of major air and train routes from Wuhan during the Spring Festival. And, and the number of confirmed cases in Wuhan, which you can see the, here, here the Wuhan in the red curve, the mainland China in the blue, and the green is the outside mainland China. Uh, so there is a, there definitely at least a, uh, a correlation between uh, uh, these uh, these uh, major activities. So this is this is one of the motivations for social distancing, which recently was also pronounced about uh, the Mr. Fauci uh, uh, contribution to the National Geographic uh, on the COVID pandemic.
So we are growing pretty fast. We are uh, doubling and tripling the numbers, uh, even quadrupling. Uh, when we are watching on the recent three months development on the confirmed cases, so for US as as for today, we have a four five point forty four millions and a global uh, more than twenty two millions. And you can see here what what was uh, what was the picture in uh, uh, first of the May where we have been much lower than these, US was 1.1. Mm, so that's definitely an issue we need to understand well the outbreaks uh, from the analytics perspective. So the first model I am going to uh, discuss here is the a uh, parametric model for epidemics grow, which is uh, given by the exponential curve A times X to the B uh, times T. So typically, here we need to uh, consider B to be positive. Uh, uh, a parameter, because, because uh, we, we are exponentially growing up. So, so when we uh, take the data from the outbreak uh, uh, which happened in Iowa uh, City uh, and Iowa State, we see the we see here the definitely the exponential curve will possibly the most uh, parsimonic way how to model the, the 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 points which are given by the by the reported data by the state, and we can also justify an exponential curve from microbiological and virological point of views. As a reasonable model for the outbreaks, this will be given in, in, in uh, particular attention on the next slides. And as an other motivation for exponential curve, as a parsimonial model, uh, we can take uh, uh, New York, Hubei, and Santiago de Chile, which are the, uh, the, the, the very uh, pandemical outbreaks uh, 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 places uh, observed last of, uh, within the last months. So replication of SARS-CoV-2 is actually uh, the issue why we can think about exponential curve. Uh, from the very beginning, the microbiological uh, point of view starts with a cellular level, whereas SARS-CoV-2 is an enveloped virus containing a single-stranded positive sense RNA genome and all, all the vaccination groups are now, now trying to address the, 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 the sub, sub uh, sequences of this RNA genome, which, which makes uh, uh, the, the, the base of the virus here. Once the virus begins and enters the target cell, a complex life cycle mechanism begins using directly the RNAs, uh, producing genomic and subgenomic RNAs and it activates a complex mechanism to uh, assemble and release the uh, so-called virions. And uh, finally, uh, uh, the, the infected cells will be destroyed and uh, the, the millions of mature virions are spread in the, in the host. So this was a cellular level but well, the individual level from the perspective of human beings uh, like a host, once the virus infects a person, so SARS-CoV-2 attacks an important diversity of cell types affecting different tissues and organs present in the respiratory system and also nervous system, digestive system, the renal system. So we can see the, there's a plethora of the systems which are attached. So this is an explained uh, uh, because the, the, the targets of the virus, uh, the issues whose cells are expressing the widely present human anti an, an, angiotensin converting enzyme 2, which is ACE2, which is now famous in, in, in the studies of the uh, uh, virus uh, roots in the body. And the dissemination routes uh, currently recognized by the v, uh, World Health Organization are through the respiratory tract. However, uh, the FECA oral route has been also recognized, and in some of the countries, uh, it plays a pretty uh, important role in the correct modeling of the outbreaks. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, 
also we can say that the uh, understanding of these backgrounds is very important for the modeler because we cannot model uh, independently from the reality which we are modeling of course so we know we need to know as much as we can in order that we can uh, make uh, a good prediction how how wide is the spread to the global population so from the uh, so how the exponential curve actually uh, appears uh, so so the, the main thing is that this is a reflected by microbiological growth uh, or microbial growth uh, in in the two phases the first is the latency phase and second is exponential phase so latency phase can be considered the moment when the virus uh, crossing the borders uh, or the barrier of the species and reach a human and uh, we understand that uh, uh, this um, understanding of the latency phases is, is very important to understand when the exponential curve will actually appear in the number of the uh, tested positively because uh, at that time uh, the mutation of the viruses are building a base uh, in the humans and, and as a new host or reservoir suitable for replications and when the exponential curve occurs the first moment uh, that already means uh, that uh, this is the contagion trend of positive SARS-CoV-2 to RT-PCR assay uh, and in each country or city, this reflects uh, the phase of microbiological growth in optimal conditions. So this is already optimal condition for growing for the virus. So virus is already stabilized in the host and he's going to enter the other hosts or search for. So problems of feeding of exponential curve model uh, are surprisingly uh, difficult from perspective even of nowadays statistics and mathematical analysis because the it's a nonlinear it's a nonlinear uh, uh, curve and uh, if you if you see here the the three periods of Iowa you can see that the starting values which are affecting all nonlinear optimization techniques are uh, severely depending on the starting value of parameter b which is in the exponent the the, the speed of the growth so we can see that there is a lot of instability on B start parameter when we watch on the days like a 30, 30 to 40 days then 1000 days 2000 days so, so so the periods we are able to predict in a stable way are very short so we can expect that one two weeks on, on this kind of uh, non-linearity and uh, even having a perfect data I, uh, we don't discuss yet the data which are imperfect so one of, one of the uh, optimization techniques uh, which can help uh, 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 relates to the uh, parametric statistics which is so-called Fisher information and this is the variance of the score of the likelihood uh, uh, so it's, it's defined here for parameter theta which can be any of the parameters we have, we, we have a single parameter scenario here which can be EGB parameter which is more as we have seen is very sensitive and it's, 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 a, uh, it's related to the second derivative, so how, how much uh, changes uh, the speed of the changes of the likelihood with respect to the parameter. And there, there are famous results in the parametric statistics like Kramer or Bound, and there are results on the optimal designing for this parameter. In the multiple uh, parameter scenario, where we are considering the whole vectors of the parameters like uh, for in expansional case a and b parameters in a serial model three typically three or four parameters depends what whether, whether we are modeling the birth and death rate uh, uh, we can uh, again compute this kind of measure and optimizing of the determinant of Fisher information can bring us the, the more stable models from statistical perspective like when we are watching on a, on a random noise perspective uh, uh, the, the, the problem we are handling here is not only the nonlinearity but is also uh, nonlinearity makes it a local optimal designs only so we need to know where the B star and A star parameter are in order to estimate the true values of A and B 
uh, given the data we have, so we can build up the sequential procedures based on the optimal designing. But, but all the, the second problem which enters here is a correlation. There is a very strong correlation between the, between the whole process here and, and that can change everything. So we can even search for the argument maximum determinant of the Fisher inflow with respect to the parameter or the vector of parameters. But we, we, uh, the question is, what is a good design now? I, I optimize that and we need to know what, what, does, what does it mean in the correlated setup. We, we, we published several papers on that around coming from 2004 to up to now actually. And the justification of, of this optimization is given actually by the proper, uh, properly uh, uh, minimizing or shrinking the confidence intervals, which can be the issue in the COVID outbreak model as we have seen in several states. So for instance, the many of the studies have, have underestimated the death rates and uh, they give it too wide intervals. So now I'm coming back to the individual parameters. So now we, for, uh, now we forget about the model for a while and we are directly interested in the quantities of our interests, which are the parameters. So sensitivity analysis, uh, which, which uh, can be uh, good study, the Saltelli work from 2000, determines how the parameters of a model influence its outputs. So we can ask the question like, if the, if the small change in parameter happen, what will be the change in my COVID outbreak in one week? Is it, is it changing that I can add a plus minus 1,000 infected people and, and, or, or 300 deaths? Or is it more changing? How, how, how nonlinear is it uh, behaving? So when we, and, and which of the parameters are actually more sensitive from the package of all parameters we are having as interpretable? or nuisance parameters. So how to study uh, the uncertainty of the, in the output? This can depend, of course, on also other, other sources of uncertainty, but this is one, one we cannot delete uh, by using the model. So this can be done in our paper uh, published in Stochastic Analysis and Applications. We, we, we work in a, a dynamic system model which is an evolution, which is the, the most generic evolution model we can imagine from COVID-19 uh, uh, outbreak. And the personal perturbations can be very related to the dynamical system theory. So sensitivity functions are defined by uh, differential equations, which are defining actually our models. And they represent the, uh, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this kind of function represents the dynamics from the perspective of individual parameter. So what we can see for the growing model, which is exponential growth model, this is also the name is Malthusian growth model from uh, according to the history. And we have two parameters, B, which is in the rate, and A, which is the initial value in time T0. And, and we, are, we can construct the two uh, differential equations here. And uh, surprisingly, the initial growth has uh, uh, only constant influence, but the B has a, has a pretty strong influence. So e imagine that the change of beta in percentage in to be 30% is changing the output in, in, in uh, uh, one, two weeks uh, for 65.5%. And this will be depending, of course, on the, on the time scale. So longer the time, the higher the change. So we can again say that constant change of initial parameter A means that changing this parameter in 1% is changing the state of, of number of infected or number of that permanently 1%. So this is a linear constant change. However, the B parameter, which is an exponent, is changing by B percent then we see that the, the change of the nominal value of the function it will be depending on the, how long we, so longer the period, the, the bigger influence of, of, the, of the person will change of B. And this is exactly P over 100 times B 
times t minus t zero and again depending on the true value of the b because it's known in our function so also stability of this parameter depends on the initial value of b but it's increasing with that with that period so so we are watching in outbreaks typically in one or two weeks uh predictions so we should be much more careful with the parameter b from the perspective of prediction the other model which is a more complicated model where you can see also the so-called peaks is a SIR model and this is a version with a visual vital dynamics so for instance we are not uh, considering here that uh, mu parameter which, which typically is used in a, in a uh, uh, other versions were cons uh, so, so really, uh, uh, of the SIR models especially the spatial formulations but what we have here is that S is the proportional susceptible population, I is the proportional infected, uh, and R is the proportion of removed population either by death or recovery. And we can notice that there is uh, not known explicit form of the solution, so we are working numerically, and which brings again the package of the, of the possibilities, what can happen by, by the discretizations. So each discretization is going to, to the different, uh, possibly different uh, stability region. And, and not necessarily going to the solution of the continuous uh, system of the, these three differential equations. However, we have, we have the fact that uh, we are uh, not, uh, we are in a closed constant population size and we, we normalize by one implies that one need only study the equation for the two or so of the three variables. So what's happening here, so we can see that, again, the sensitivity of the parameter is very different. Uh, and this is fit for beta equals 1.4 and gamma equals 0.2. And we can see that the, 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 the beta is very sensitive uh, parameter here. Uh, 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 the gamma in comparison with the gamma, which is a blue curve, the right curve for beta is much more sensitive. So if you want to see the perspective of the recent uh, COVID outbreaks, um, and we will take some uh, aggregation function, which is measuring the model precision, like a half of symmetric mean absolute percentage error, which is defined here, where the FT is for a casted in time T, AT is, actu uh, is actual in time T, and we are watching on a 14 days uh, prognosis uh, and parameter estimation that Iowa, Hubei, and Chile is quite well because this, uh, the, the, this uh, measure is from 7% to 9% of the quality. Of course, the lower is the better, so zero will be the perfect fit, clearly. So, but in New York, Slovakia are much worse, uh, and they are from like 14 to 29 percent. So, there's a pretty big uh, this measure, and we can understand that, that, that this is this can be caused by all, all the issues I have been discussing on the previous slides. And evidently, the prediction is not good even for one week of the SIR model, uh, possibly, possibly discretization also uh, take a role in this. So, let me conclude and give some outlines. Uh, so we can, uh, by modeling, we need to ask the following question. So do we have a perfect data for modeling? Of course not. So each number of infected people usually comes from a control testing, uh, like clusters today, modern in Europe, or, or, some, uh, set, uh, or some other selective uh, strategies in uh, even the pooled testing. And this is not coming from the random inspection of the population. The second issue is the parameters, uh, beta, gamma, might often depend on time or space variables. So they are spatial temporal in principle. And I, I need to understand the country which is modeling, like a Chile, where the heterogeneity, spatial heterogeneity rules the country. We, we, we can see this very clearly that the models for different regions will even have completely different epidemiological curves. This uh, third point, these parameters can even depend on other factors of our conditions we are uh, taking as an attribute, which are not necessarily in the first moment clear, like it can depend on the gender, age, social groups, uh, uh, hospital systems, uh, which makes modeling pretty multidimensional. 
uh, of course, and, um, to have a concrete model which is working pretty well, a uh, few number of parameters can be insufficient, but our parameterization is also unacceptable. So real processes often include uh, after effects phenomena, and they, they can be a time delay systems on, 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 the, on the scene. But, but in worst cases, like time varying delays, for instance, uh, uh, we, we need to take it in, into account uh, that we can encounter the stability and oscillations of the model itself. There is a question whether the parameters of a model can be identified. So from the very beginning, uh, whether they are unique given by the model or there are several solutions from them uh, by the method we use, like a specific input output experiment uh, is, is, is a perf if, if the perfect data are available. So the for instance, for time invariant model or linear model, there are several approaches available for this checking, like identifiability analysis. In general, it, if we don't have identifiability, it's very hard to make anything which will be very precise, especially when we want to have interpretability of the parameters. So discretization of the model uh, is playing the big role here. So the different discretization can have different convergence schemes uh, to the different uh, stability regions of the parameters and, uh, and the solution of the continuous system. Uh, see also the time scale. So this relates to, to the time scale calculus. Non, non uniqueness of the solution of the model and the prediction can happen here. Be bifurcations and predictions uh, uh, can be, can be uh, uh, multiple. And we need to choose the correct one as well as, as, as or, or consider the scenarios A, B, C, D. Misinterpretation of the results can be can be coming, especially when we are going to interpret the parameters like the active infected individuals versus the cumulative number of infected individuals and other other uh, unreported things. In a specific country, one can define several social groups, as I already told, which can contribute in heterogeneous ways to whole country epidemiological curves. So this is uh, this is uh, my talk, and I just want to make a very important uh, statement at the very end that we are um, going to publish a special issue in Journal of Applied Statistics by Taylor and Francis. Uh, is the name statistical perspective on analytics for COVID-19 data. And we are publishing the critics of published COVID data already, comparisons of methods, applied methodologies, identification of factors related to the diagnosis of the COVID, predictive analytics for COVID, including mortality exposure, hospitaliz hospitalizations, risk analysis, risk assessment analytic approaches for COVID-19 con contract tracing data, and optimal design and sensitivity for parameters of COVID-19 growth models. So thank you for your attention, and I will be uh, curious about your comments and questions. And here are my references. The paper in published in Stochastic Analysis, and we, we use uh, sensitivity analysis uh, book from Saltelli and all.